Welcome to the ProAct Toolsets Lesson 3, Alternatives. Understanding how to create the alternatives that you must decide upon. This lesson covers the A, alternative, in the ProAct decision-making process. Alternatives are the raw ingredients of decision-making. When it comes to making decisions, most of us have done one or a combination of the following things. Fallen back on default alternatives. We choose the same shoe shop we've been using for years. Develop variations on default alternatives. We choose the same shoe shop we've used for years and then ask for a discount. We choose the first workable solution to our problem that comes along. Use the alternatives that others have recommended without first considering our own. Or waited too long to decide and then found that we are left with less alternatives than we started with. A decision is only as good as the alternatives from which we will make our choice. And yet, and it may sound strange, we often think that our decision will turn out better than the alternatives we've identified. This lesson consists of this presentation together with a lesson guide to help you define your alternatives. In this presentation, we'll describe six ways in which to create alternatives that are based on the decision objectives we identified in lesson two. We will also cover three tips to help guide you through this step of the ProAct process. Here are six ways to identify the best possible alternatives from which to make your decision. Ask yourself how. For each of your decision objectives, ask yourself, how would I go about achieving this objective? If one of your objectives is to gather £3,000 for a deposit in order to rent an apartment, ask yourself, how would I obtain £3,000 for a deposit? Depending on your circumstances, your alternatives might range from getting a loan to taking an evening job in order to earn some extra money. Challenge constraints. Challenge the constraints that limit your alternatives by identifying the real constraints and the assumed constraints that you're working to. For example, if you were making a decision about your wedding day, a real constraint would be the date of the wedding that you've already booked, while an assumed constraint is that the wedding reception should take place in a hotel. Until you've actually booked a function room in a hotel, you've developed a mental constraint that this is the only alternative that you have thereby limiting yourself when other alternatives are available to you. Assumed constraints are often rooted in habit or tradition. For example, all the wedding receptions I've attended are held in hotels. To avoid such constraints, ask yourself, do things have to be or work this way? Set high aspirations. One way of identifying unconventional alternatives is to set yourself high aspirations. Aiming high will force you to see things differently and to think outside of the box. For instance, how might the alternatives based on taking a year to save £3,000 for a deposit differ from the alternatives you would identify if you set yourself a target of six months instead? Do your own thinking first. It's always useful to ask others for suggestions. The disadvantage of doing this first, before we've pondered the problem, is that their thinking may introduce their habits and traditions into our way of thinking and possibly narrow our view of the potential solutions. Do your own thinking first, even if you know little about the decision you're trying to make. How often have you been impressed by a comment that starts with, I don't know much about this, but have you considered? Once you've done your own thinking, you're ready to ask others for their ideas and suggestions. Learn from experience. If you face a problem that is similar to the one you're facing now, use that experience to help you identify alternatives. Additionally, if you're aware of others who faced a problem similar to yours, examine what they did to understand the alternatives available to you. For example, while looking for alternatives to help you gather a £3,000 deposit, you consider what you did the last time you had to save some money, such as cancelling your gym membership for a year and instead running and cycling to stay fit. You then think about what your friends living in their own apartments did to raise a deposit. While working through your experiences and the experiences of others, keep an open mind so that you don't fall into the trap of thinking that because they've worked before, 
that these alternatives are the only ones worth considering. Ask others for suggestions. Asking others for suggestions has two benefits. Firstly, you learn about how others have made a decision similar to yours and the alternatives they've identified to help them reach it. Secondly, describing your problem and the decision you're looking to make and answering any questions they have helps to clarify your situation so that you better understand it. For instance, have you ever found yourself describing a problem to a friend or colleague and as you're doing so, a solution pops into your head? This tends to happen because we're having to redefine the problem and change our perspective in order to help another understand our situation. Some tips. Here are three things to keep in mind when generating alternatives. 1. Identify alternatives, but don't evaluate them. At this stage, you want to identify as many alternatives as you can. If you start considering the pros and cons of an alternative, you stifle your creativity because rejecting an alternative at this stage will automatically filter out other similar alternatives, one of which might provide a better solution to the one you've just rejected. 2. Give your subconscious time to work. Inspiration strikes when we're not thinking about the problem and doing something completely different. If you find yourself staring at a list of alternatives on a computer screen or on a piece of paper and feel stuck, get up and go do something different. When you least expect it, and after your subconscious has had time to process the problem, you'll suddenly think of an alternative. Make sure to write it down immediately to avoid forgetting it. 3. Know when to quit looking. It's one thing to search for the best solution to a problem, and another to search for a perfect one. It's important to be thorough when identifying alternatives, but at some point you have to stop and move on to the next step in the product process, consequences. You'll know that you're done when you answer yes to one or more of these questions. Have I used all six of the approaches in this lesson for identifying my alternatives? Do I have a range of alternatives where some are different from others? Would I be satisfied with one of my alternatives as a final decision? Without alternatives, we have nothing with which to make a decision. And since a decision is only as good as the best alternative that we can identify, it pays to use all six approaches described in this lesson to help you find it. <laughs>